you can always you can always tell when a name is just a, a fucking goddamn hot mess for us here in the states because uh, no interview ever states this guy's name like except for the russian interviews so, so these fine ladies are calling him danila and that was exactly what i was trying to avoid calling him but danila Kozlowski. That's how I'm gonna fucking address the guy. But Danila does a hell of a job. A hell of a job. Vikings season six, episode one and two. We're talking about new beginnings in the Prophet, all bunched together. Dual release, two straight hours of Vikings. is one of those shows it's just it's it's good obviously it's not as good as when Ragnar was there I mean but it had to progress uh, I, I keep seeing articles about why Travis Bimmel left and all he left because his job was done like like trust me her I, I got I got issues with Harris he put a hot air balloon seemingly in this if you've seen my silly video I put out but it wasn't like some big issue it wasn't some controversy it wasn't it wasn't anything like that the guy's job was done so it's like it, it's over i'm sick of hearing about ragnar like now it's just got to be the best show ken and it's closing up i saw a lot in these episodes that lead me to believe that they're gonna uh, gonna stick that landing and i saw a lot that, that was disappointing i'd probably say 70 percent great 30 percent fucking awful but, but that's pretty damn good. But I, what I like about the show is it's not like Game of Thrones in the sense of, I, trust me, I love A Song of Ice and Fire, but oh man, it just got so polarizing at the end and it just got so intense with the fandom. I had such a good time. Shout out to a Facebook group, actually, Vikings Aftermath crew, just doing live chat with people during these episodes admittedly had to go back and rewatch episodes but have an engaging conversation and people have a, a different range of expectations but everybody's pretty much on the same level they know they know it's gonna be it's gonna be fun it's gonna be good it's not garbage you're never gonna have like the relationship with Athelstan and, and Ragnar again I mean, that really explores some deep topics and, and, and now they have a chance to, to close it with, with some dignity and then, then they're taking the proper amount of time so what more can you ask for so we're gonna talk about some fucking Vikings people so what's going on everybody justin thomas here from top shelf fandom make sure to subscribe make sure to like the video i'm going to do the broad strokes of these two episodes I, i'm not going to get all pseudo historian on you i'm just going to give you what i like what i didn't like we're going to try to look at the broad strokes here this is one of the few series that i do episodic reviews on still let's just start with bjorn bjorn's in kattegat now i didn't really love the way that he got the kattegat last season it seems like it was kind of just thrown on it seems like it was just thrown at us at the very end and it was like okay this is what he wants and, and it's what he wants because they're telling us that's what he wants but the story hasn't told us it's what he wants it's been no like foreshadowing for this it kind of got kind of been like you know a place that they'd wanted to leave uh bjorn is more wanderlust but i i, I, I kind of see that circling back to to that exact issue of him being more of a wanderlust character and an adventurer and, and not going to be um very successful as a king and, and I'm not hating on this storyline, actually. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons. I, I'm actually liking it because they're depicting a bad, bad king. Uh, you know, poor Bjorn. Kind of a piece of shit, too, right? Doesn't, it's not a lot of, like, ethical or moral uh, pros for that fella. It's just, you know, not the best dad, not the best dude. Uh, just a good warrior. But he's trying to be a good guy. But he, he, what he's trying to do is not be Ivar. And you can't distinguish yourself by showing who you're not. Not to get all Machiavellian here. Uh, not to get all Machiavellian here. Uh, and you should read The Prince, ironically, by the way. But there are certain things that you just don't do. And Bjorn, if you wanted to write a manual, and I'm, I'm not trying to armchair cane it from here, but if you had to write a manual about how to go step by step about how to how to start a band of murdering marauders, right, that are going to definitely, definitely fuck shit up for you, you do exactly what Bjorn did. So Bjorn has some of Ivar's loyal um, bodyguards, and they did atrocious, egregious things, which... I'm not saying they didn't, but I'm also saying, you know, uh, all these all these Vikings at this point have done some pretty 
bad, bad shit. Uh, but these are the worst of the worst. So uh, he says that Ivar would have killed them. Okay. So again, he's just proving he's not Ivar, not showing who he is. So what he does is something that's actually a little bit resemblant of an issue that is uh, in our own culture today. It, uh, the road for redemption is just not there. Um, I'll just leave it at that. So what he does is he brands these gentlemen. And then he says, he says, he says, they'll never be redeemed. They'll live out on, in the outskirts, you know, not being accepted in any society. And again, there's no chance of redemption for these guys. So he's pretty much just taken away all motivation that would lead to any type of behavioral traits that would maybe stop these people from raping and killing everybody you love. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But you're branding them. So there's a stigma. You're also giving them no hope of redemption, so they have no reason to do anything but try to hurt you. You didn't kill them, but you just pretty much just put rabid dogs out into the woods. Like, this is step-by-step step how to create an issue for you in those people that don't reside right in Kattegat. Part B of this is Legatha going in and having her uh, trope is called a 10-minute retirement, uh, you know, putting the guns down, hanging up the sword. Uh, every hero tries to do it. Usually a lot of Westerns play off this trope. It's they're done with their gunslinging days and they got to get brought back into it. She's definitely going to be digging up that sword again for this exact reason. The point is you do not put these people out there with no chance of redemption because all they're going to do is just try to lash out at people. You're literally creating a fucking like band of, like I said, marauding murderers. Uh, and I think that this is good intentions, but, you know... But the old saying, the, the, you know, the path to hell is paved by good intentions and so forth. And he's trying to say that, hey, I'm different, but you should have killed these guys. You should have killed them. If you're not going to give them redemption or a chance at it, a chance to assimilate back into society and, and, and have some sort of goal that isn't just, hey, I'm going to try to fuck your shit up as much as possible. Then you, you kill them for sure. You got to kill them. Don't make a big spectacle of it. Do it, do it as humanely as possible. But if, if these people don't have a role to play in your society and you rule that society, you need to eliminate them in some way. Neither of those ways, like I said, are good. None, neither of those ways are ethical or moral. But you are supposed to be protecting these people. So anyways, so speaking of people out in the woods that are going to be looking for people to harm, like if it's hanging up the... The, or better yet, burying the sword. I like this. This makes sense. They're aging her again. Uh, got my issues with hers, with the way he ages and de-ages and doesn't age females for half of the series and does. It's like, you know, either do it or don't do it. It becomes more obvious when you don't. But anyways, she's older. She, she's, she wants to get back to her life. Hers definitely uh, he kills characters in a very specific way. I think a very effective way. Uh, what I mean by that is there's always certain uh, sequences that will happen, certain um, reoccurring events, uh, visions of the past, uh, the same score will play. There will be a white horse eventually, um, most likely flooding will come about. Uh, we saw this in the Tudors. This is why you'll probably have Travis Fimmel have a, uh, a spot in, in season 6A, and, and this will be a vision of some sort. I do believe that he recorded something. He filmed something. So yeah, Legatha is definitely going to die, but she's definitely going to have to dig up that sword for multiple reasons. Bjorn's got a few issues. He's got to stay loyal to Harold. Harold evidently is caught in some type of... It's unclear if it's Olaf is got him captive or if he's just ruling when Harold wants to rule. I think he has him captive. You have to excuse me. I, I don't mind that. I think that Olaf's an excellent character. I think that he's a fucking baddie dude. And I think that you can definitely play around with that. Now, Harold has been saying that, hey, I'm going to steal your shit since the day he showed up. Literally, as Log said, if you were going to be king of all of Denmark, then you have to dethrone my husband, right? Now, now this is when she wasn't too happy with him, but this guy's definitely an issue in the real history. He actually is the king. So I, I do suspect that he will at some point, at some point will wear the crown in, in a, a substantial, meaningful way. Uh, we'll wrap back around with this with the wanderlust uh, characteristic and characterization and, and story arc of, of Bjorn. I believe that he will end up journeying off. And that is, that is what will truly give him um, resolution that I think is satisfying. Uh, like I said, you know, Bjorn is a, a good character in the sense of... <sighs> He, he he's great 
up until he gets too tied up with Lagatha and they can't move until one does one thing or the other does another. We saw this a lot last season. He had to hurry up and wait for Lagatha to get through her stuff, and then he all of a sudden wanted to be king. So as sad as I am to see Catherine Winnick go, I think it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be the right time for her to leave. Um, it's going to be sentimental. It's going to be emotional, and, and it'll play out uh, very, very uh, par for course as far as, as Hearst goes is his method for killing these characters, which I, I think is effective. I kind of like that it's uniform and I think it's beautiful and it, it gets me every time. So we've already seen, you know, drops of this coming in. So definitely going to be digging up that sword real quick for um, not only some sort of an issue with Olaf, but uh, these, these bandits, you know, these, these, this thieving murderous crew that now are, are branded running around in the woods. Uh, but that's a good, that's a good little story there. It's, it's an old one, but it's a good one. It's, it's, you know, the warrior princess must uh, return to be a shield maiden one more time after hanging up the guns or burying the sword. So it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit cliche, but you know, cliches are um, cliches because they, they they tend to work. So uh, if done the right way. So we'll move on and we'll get back to Kattegat and everything that's going on because we need to talk about Uba and Vitschek. Now, I loved about 70% of both of these episodes and hated about 30%. That'll factor in there. Ivar, I'm not a... F I, 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 I really failed to have any sort of empathy even and, and if you've seen any of my videos or heard me speak before empathy is the one emotional connection that is absolutely needed with your audience you have to have an empathetic viewpoint for the character meaning you understand why they're doing what they're doing or how they think they need to do what they do ivar has never made a lot of sense for me it seems like he's disabled when it's convenient for him to be disabled when they need external internal conflict and then he walks around literally um he, he's <laughs> he's as appealing as he's ever been for me and that's because he's quite clearly and they've been very overt about this and it's a little bit of an issue for me but also it is what it is uh there's a few articles out there i, I haven't read them but I, i've seen the headlines are he will mirror Olaf. it's not like some big secret but i don't know i think it's sometimes better to let like narratives play out for people that haven't done any writing or anything like that i mean it's pretty freaking obvious that this guy is you know reflective of Ivar's behavioral traits you don't need to have a screenwriting course to know that but it's I don't know sometimes when when the media is like so overt with it or they like okay this guy is going to be a foil or this guy is going to mirror him and this is going to cause internal I don't know it's kind of like I don't know, inside baseball so but it, it is what's happening it's clear that perspective that we will gain will be an empathetic one for Ivar because what we need to have happen is we need to have him in Olog Yes, come back to Kattegat, but I, I don't see that resulting in a, a, a union that is bonded in any significant way. The only thing that I've taken away from Ivar is that he had a childhood that he was extremely pampered and coddled by his mother. He feels like he has all of these wrongs that have been done to him throughout his childhood by others. You know, like, I think it's pretty clear that those are a lot in his head. Uh, I'm not saying that people weren't, you know, harsh with him, but they've even, there's been narrative, there's been dialogue, there's been, you know, uh, Vitschek saying, I don't remember doing that. I don't, you know, it, it is what it is, but he feels like he was wronged, I think, a lot more than he was. But one thing is he really, really values relationship with a son with a child in their parent he didn't have that with his father to see igor be so maliciously just utilized and, and just pretty much just weaponized and, and just used as a as a pawn it, without any type of care or love or compassion whatsoever ivar has been a complete fucking mess a circus pretty much of a human being something i again had literally no empathy for i really had a lot of disdain for the character in general. And this seems to be um, very well done. This seems to be going on a path that I can get behind. This is the smart path because what we need to happen is for him, yes, to come back. We need Bjorn to leave Kattegat and go on his wanderlust ways, whether or not that, that lands him, uh, you know, over in Sweden or if that lands him in uh, Byzantium again or, you know, the, any anywhere but, but Kattegat. That is not where Bjorn is most likely going to end up. Um, for his resolution i think that he will be venturing out in in the sagas he's a swedish king blah 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 
we'll, we'll figure out what happens. But what we are seeing is that there's a pretty strong indication, and this is the 50% that I don't like about this whole Rus Kiev Viragian thread, story thread, is that it seems they are completely displacing the England story thread. And I think they're totally putting that on hold until season 6B, until 6B. I don't like that because what we have to have happen is it's pretty much Chekhov's chess game that's going to happen with Ivar and um, Prince Alfred, and King Alfred. So in real life, uh, this this goes down with uh, a, a Viking called Guthrum that Uba is pretty much like side by side with. Uh, if you read Uba's saga, it is literally he's Guthrum's uh, right-hand man, Guthrum not being a son of uh, Ragnar or claiming to be a son of Ragnar or anything like that. But there is what seems to be depicted as uh, the East Anglia settlement in this series. In real life, there's what was known as Dane Law that was East Anglia. Guthrum has a deal with King Alfred, breaks the deal, they attack, that's when you have your showdown. If you've seen The Last Kingdom, you've seen a semblance of, the, of this. But what we have to have is a, is a reason for Ivar to come back, Ivar to make amends, probably with Vitschek, and we're going to get into him and finish this up, um, not liking what's happening with him. And then you need him to go against Alfred, and you have to be able to root for Ivar and also root for Alfred and have like, almost like a, a Blackwater situation, meaning you don't even know who you want to win, but you have to be – polling for each side or have reasons to pull for each side i don't see that being um bjorn's fight i see that being uba's vitschek and ivar's fight i see them going and facing off against alfred in the final half of this series 6b i don't like that it looks like we're not getting any of that i don't think that should be put on hold it could work in some ways meaning that they're they're taking us away because there is a lot of empathy for Alfred and they could totally shine a light back on that story thread. A degree of separation from him as a character in the story thread. So it will work. I don't think it's the best way to get that to work because it's almost like you did too good of a job with Alfred and too shitty of a job with Ivar. So now you need to create a degree of separation within your story, within your character arcs that can't merge together. You can't have progress with Ivar if you have Alfred on screen because they're going to face off against each other. It's just going to happen. It's not according to the sagas. It's not according to Jack's shit. It's according to fucking Chekhov's chess match, pretty much. I mean, they played chess. They said they were going to play chess again. That chess board is going to come out, but it's going to be a literal chess game. Bit check. Okay. I think one of the best actors, especially for the guys, the guy's like smaller than me. Small dude, but I think he does well with the physicality. I think that he's a very talented actor. And there's always a rule. Uh, when I was at Second City and doing improv, a rule of improv when you're even in class is you can't act like a baby. Because a lot of people will always fall back to, for some reason, when they get nervous, they'll act like a baby. It's really weird. It's off-putting. Also, they'll act drunk. Those are two things you don't do. Now, I'm not saying this is improv by any means, but it's a hard thing. I'm kind of trying to give a little bit of a uh, cushion, a little bit of room here for, for uh, the actor because it's hard to do. He, he's playing a hot mess. Evidently, he's very emotionally connected to everybody else is moving on and figuring out how to be a king, how to get to Iceland. We'll, we'll save that for the next review and we'll see what's happening with that. I have some connections with Greenland that I think might happen. You might get Uba completely uh, going west when they're going to be going back to Britain. So technically both west, but one much further west. Anyways, you've got a, a hot mess of a bit check. It's it's very hard to play that convincingly, to, to play a drunkard, to play a, um addict, to play any of that. It, it comes off weird. It comes off odd. I think he's one of the better actors, honestly. I, I don't agree that, that Bjorn has um, evolved as an actor throughout this. I, I, I honestly think his better work was in the earlier seasons. I got to give it up for who's playing Olog. Now, the whole hot air balloon, I have a video that'll be up here right now. Um, with a little bit of Step Brothers and a Hall and Oates uh, mixed in there, um, playing off some memes, but a little bit silly. But I, I look at that situation is the same situation that Eckbert and Ragnar had. Now, uh, all puns intended, Eckbert and Ragnar had a far more grounded relationship and grounded conversation, but it's essentially in principle the same thing. It's only kings can understand other kings. 
So they're up there kind of having a similar conversation in principle that uh, Eckbert and Ragnar have several times, especially in the last um, season that Ragnar is alive, when they, when they have that great dialogue uh, and discourse about what is going to happen to them in the afterlife, about Bahala, about heaven, about how it's both silly and all this. It's fantastic. You know, it's again, the, the only them, you know, and they have to be above everybody else, just like they are metaphorically in, in this one, literally. By the way, the first fucking hot air balloon, and call it what you want, it's some sort of a balloon, is like in 1780 in France or something like that. Definitely not in um, Kiev or the Ukraine or wherever they are um, in, in, in 842. Whatever, Hearst, do your thing, man. Weird, weird choice. But I think it's kind of like the thing of like the Vikings sail and they can sail to another world. So like he can fly. I don't know. It's that's a push. That was that was a bad move. But yeah, in principle, it is the same. Um, you know, Torvi again, you've got situations with characters like I've talked about before. You've got a situation where you've got characters tied too much to another character. Um, Queen Gunheld. Gunhild. See, I don't get that behind Bjorn either. That's why I like him when he's off doing things. When you, when you really sit down and look at Bjorn, is not in movement. He is not. Uh, upon further examination, you don't like what you see. But anyways, it seems like she understands that she can't tame him and he's going to have a king's appetite. So if you can't control the situation, control the chaos essentially by like allowing it. But... It is what it is. I mean, I'm not too invested in any of that. I, I think that the point of this, and, and it's not bad storytelling. I think Bjorn is going to fail on all fronts here. This will lead him to what he is good at. Probably another connection with Rolo and his wanderlust travels after this. So he will fail here. This isn't shitty writing. This is, this is probably what the guy would do from the characterization that we've gotten so far. So all in all, two straight hours of pretty solid Vikings. Yeah, a little bit of silly stuff, but man, the Ruse stuff was really good. Um, besides the hot air balloon, uh, this checks, yeah, drunkard stuff is kind of silly. Uh, Iceland, I don't want to get too much into, uh, right now. I want to see where they go with that. I'm not, I mean, I'd love to see Floki come back, but man, I'd almost like to just stay as like mocking on him at the very end and fuck all that that's going on in Iceland. I'm not interested unless it leads to Greenland. And I said, I'm not going to get all pseudo uh, historian on you. And I got to stream in a little bit. So all, all around eight out of 10, if that means anything to you, eight out of 10 for these first two episodes, way better than the first two episodes last season. And Ivar is on a path that I don't find just, just horrible to watch. Like I literally fucking hated Ivar last season. I've hated Ivar pretty much the whole time. And I'm, I'm digging it. I'm liking it. And I thought it was going to be awful. So, you know, it's working. They are mirroring him. There's a juxtaposition here. There is a similarity, but there's also these differences. He is seeing the evil. He's looking in the mirror, per se, but he's also seeing the glaring issues that, you know, he, he stands apart from in the ones, more importantly, that he wants to stand apart from. So he will have a transition as a character. So subscribe, guys. Uh, I'll be on Johnny B. Crazy's uh, Viking Berserker. Um, lunch stream blah 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 so uh, if you want to support creativity i can't thank my patreons enough uh, a very small and dedicated group of people that just help me make content that much easier and you know i don't do this to make money i do this because i love to express myself creatively and i, I just try not to go broke doing it uh, so if you want to donate three dollars a month and three dollars a month isn't gonna break you hey it makes a huge difference over on this end so check out the link below also bonus vpn they sponsor me. If you guys sign up, I get a little kickback. You don't have to give your credit card and get free two gigs of, of VPN. And I've seen a lot of people say that they didn't have access to Vikings the night that it aired. So, I mean, if that's an issue for you, then you can get access by coming onto an American server. And you can also do the opposite. You can go onto a British server. You can go onto a Turkish server. There is different content in different regions and it's fantastic. And it also protects your identity. So that's something. Make sure to subscribe, guys. We will see you soon.